Hunter x Hunter episode 78, very X rapid extra production. Yes, indeed. Oh yeah, give me this insect lore. Is that thing in Jujutsu Kaisen also a Hunter x Hunter reference? We got the whole locust lore once. Oh my god. This is minding your business farming and then... Ant invasion with human faces. I guess the fish ones didn't make it. Wow, wow. This is horrific. Uh, this is already out of control. Oh, she's building a final dungeon. Oh, she's building a final dungeon. Right, that's the issue. It depends how smart they are. How conscious they are of trying to avoid detection. And right now it seems like they're just killing indiscriminately, but also leaving no witnesses. Do they not report data? Yeah, there it is. Well, you got it. Execution? Damn, it's like Singaporean gum. Well, letter? They are committed to their, their stance. Right. It's the perfect breeding ground. Is that just luck on the Ant Queen's part, or was it deliberate? I mean, they, they, they already have the human traits. <laughs> so were they born with this clothing? What is this animal society? <laughs> Very obedient to his mother. Yes. It's even worse than you're imagining. Good. Yeah, thanks. I really needed that scene of the crying mother to feel bad. Feel worse than I already felt. Maybe the mother still plays a role? I feel so bad about that table etiquette joke now. Have we seen Reina's insect yet? Oh, they're back to finish the job. One of them looks a lot like Kurt. God, just when I thought it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Curious. Oh, it's in there somewhere. Does that make insect Kurt her gra grandkid? Oh, they have guns! Yes, the most powerful men. Oh, we got another, another crew, another party. This is not kind of technology. This goes highly effective, though, considering they're insects. I just assume that joke was funnier in the original. And they're also drug dealers? This country setup is wild. Closed off nation where you get executed for technology use, but then like drug deals. Seems like they, they execute very liberally. Oh, it's Panzu. Oh yeah, she does insects, right? And they teamed up. Lots of familiar faces. Oh yeah, he does animals. Oh, 
調査に入る前に。And executed. だからこそ、いざという時のために私が。いいえ、この子たちが。Can you communicate with bees? 手紙を持たせれば、どこまでも飛んでいくわ。Pons are low, low key terrifying. It's all gearing up towards a major insect war. 今さらだが確かめておきたい。本当に一緒に来るか。At least he asked. You're walking into a war zone, for real. And literally walking. This I really appreciate. Okay, so we're Did they promise? That feels like foreshadowing. I've always kind of resented when people made decisions for me or made decisions for me by obscuring information because they felt they were the, the judge or arbiter of what I could and couldn't handle and that it was for me. I mean, there are definitely some cases where that was probably right, you know, but there's a high possibility that contains an arrogance that you know what's better for someone, that it's okay for you to decide how, how you spend your life and what risks you take, but not afford that same courtesy or that same agency to other people. I've always felt like just give me the information. Give me the facts and let me make my own choices. The critical part there is like the information, and that's exactly what Kite's doing. This is what I foresee happening. This is the reality that you need to look at. If I've given you all of that and you can understand what I'm laying in, in front of you to a sufficient degree, it's a matter of respect that I then accept your decision. This is a bold statement, but I feel like the truth is never bad. Even further, I would say it's always good, even if it can be painful. Deception is where things get messy. Deception is not scalable or iterable, and the truth is, putting it in real world terms, I I think the controversy here would be that they're they're kids. But then the counter to that is, first of all, it's not the real world. Second of all, they're not just kids, right? Go and are not at the level of children in most of the key ways we think about what being a child is. As a kid or a teenager, I hated when people told me I wasn't ready for certain things that I knew I was ready for, or even worse, hid things from me for a long time, thinking I couldn't possibly understand or cope. Those things coming to light never made me feel like I was kept safe. It made me feel like I was kept vulnerable because I didn't know certain key things. I had less truth data from which to form my, my worldview and knowledge and action. Obviously, it's needed for the plot progression, but for me, Kite saying that to them is, a, is one of the highest forms of respect he could have given. The feeding hole. How much can she eat? Oh, yeah, this is playing, playing a role. The memories were inherited. The turtle guy. <laughs> Even to them, it's just the turtle guy. Oh, God, they can read now. This is getting into very uncomfortable ethical territory very quickly. They're just becoming like a cognizant, highly intellectually advanced species, but like also beholden to the ant queen. This is random, but I never get the chance to talk about ants, so we, here we are. In things that contain fractals, meaning the smaller components are structurally very similar to the larger components that they make up, it can get a little bit weird when you try to pin down a definition to, to one level of that fractal. So like we look at one ant and we think it's an organism, right? Like an individual organism. But is that the right classification? Because each ant is very specialized, sort of like a human cell, right? So maybe the ant colony is the organism. But then you might ask the same question of humanity. Like, okay, we have cells and each cell does their part and that creates an organism. But then maybe one way to look at it is the human species is the organism. And in fact, if you think from an evolutionary perspective or, or a, a survival perspective, evolution is sort of built around the idea that the individual unit is expendable in benefit to the whole. Our cells have much shorter lifespans than we, the individual, have. Same is true of the overall species, right? Like natural selection benefits and strengthens the species through death of individuals. Or is the organism just life itself and that each species is, is a cell in that organism? Another sci-fi question in that light, if another species came to be that had a greater creative and survival potential than humans, would humans not then sort of be irrelevant in this whole evolutionary mission or plan or whatever, or imperative? That's perhaps one flaw or nagging question in my argument that humans are, are God made through natural processes and that there's divinity there. Like what if we just become irrelevant? What if we're just stepping stones? The one counter to that is I would say because something ends doesn't mean it's not essential. When playing a role in an infinite system, you are an essential part of that infinite system, even if your individual time frame is limited. Yeah, like we call you the turtle guy. Yeah, like we call you the turtle guy. 
some of them. Ore to my no say Kakuma Chingaoni. Ningeni mo, Samazamana Kosega, the Tosenda Nanishiro, Oretachimo, Sonochio Hitirun da Karana. You imagine the human nature of their, their genes it contains pros, but you'd imagine also contains negatives, like their squabbles, <laughs> factioning and squabbling. Oh, Oh god, she's got that, like, Aaron intercom. Is that, uh, is that his sister? Oh no, no, they getting a little bit too aware. Some good management. <laughs> Letting your best do good work on their own initiative. This is turning into an interesting statement on humanity. Through insects. Speaking of Aaron? Cool. This company really innovating. <laughs> she really has the Steve Jobs of the insect plague world. This whole topic is so endlessly fascinating. I love this weird ant colony human mix thing. You would imagine that these individual human elements end up being both improvements and detractions, maybe from like the ant mission. There's a case to be made that due to the overwhelmingly intense evolutionary pressure, sexual selection pressure, there is nothing that comes out of humanity that doesn't at least flow from things and a combination of things that are essential for survival or that have played an essential role at some point. I don't think there's any individual element or trait of humanity that is intrinsically evil. It all will depend on the execution. And this also connects to my what is the organism question. If you want a species to survive, you need at least some organisms to survive. So organisms have a survival imperative and resources are limited. So those with the strongest survival imperative will have the greatest drive and ingenuity to obtain the resources necessary for survival as well as reproduction but individual survival when taken to too great of an extreme especially when power is very centralized or there's a high systemic impact of one individual's quest for survival that becomes detrimental or risky to the species survival you also have survival advantages to cooperation so you have things like altruism and since dna also can be considered the organism or the thing that gets perpetuated as opposed to the individual you have natural built-in kinship for those with similar dna but having kinship for more than just your dna perhaps has benefits to your dna it's like this very weird non-solvable problem in loop where there is no one-size-fits-all method or package in our genetic coding for how to handle problems and so you have eternal conflict there are just so many levels to it like just speaking of how to classify we have dna right and dna seems to actually be the locus of imperative but then you have things like law and rules and societal etiquettes and are those not a dna of a kind are ideas and concepts themselves not a fractal or mirror of physical dna and like what's the priority what's the overall mission what is the most essential thing that needs to survive. If I had to try to guess, I would say that it's whatever system or combination of systems leads to the greatest possible potential for development and creation and pushing that life envelope to continuously higher stages. It's just really tricky because we live in a complex world of limited resources, scarcity, where death is real, where wins in one realm are losses in another realm, the full understanding of which is way beyond any individual's comprehension. That I guess is simultaneously why we cannot eradicate evil from the world because evil emerges when there's improper or potential reducing or, or limiting use of otherwise naturally and important functions, facilities of animal life or human life. But nevertheless, they are shadow forms of like pure functions. And also why as humans we have, I would say, a mission to push the limits of understanding as far as we can go so that we can handle nuance and complexity and see systems as being important as opposed to only our immediate needs. The ability to think systemically is not something we have yet caught up to in our biology. It's it's only really in some other kind of weird life form that's forming a, as a result of like culture and society. But for individual organisms to start to grasp that and apply that to one's reasoning and actions is a potential game changer. <laughs> Yeah, out of all the things he said, I feel like that's the most difficult. I, yeah, I picked up on that. They didn't really make a promise one way or the other. This is a parenting strategy. Uh, did Jing foresee the, like, insect invasion? 
結局いつものゴンじゃんえ、right. いくら考えたってゴンはゴン誰かを見捨てて逃げろと言われたって、right. できるわけねえよな、right. and in a sense you'll always be Jing as weird as that is だったらキラーはどうなのさ Uh, well, same for him. He's gonna back up Gon. Nope. Now, this plays so heavily into Clue's whole thing. That, very relevant, even though he's saying very casually. That's his fear. That's his big fear. This is setting up for that, maybe. Yeah. They're just landing into a hellscape. At least, like, they'll catch up with Ponzu. Clue brushing off that. Question very casually, but like that's so much of his development is will he be able to act in situations of extreme self peril? That's been there since the beginning. Can he protect his friends at the cost of his own life? Going to set a moment that I feel I've had a bunch of times in my life where I like really think through something and feel like I've come to a fully independent, autonomous, well reasoned decision only to look back and see the pattern across my life and that I'm way more a function of like. <laughs> Just something else, like just some inherent thing that I want to believe or that I ever realized. It's like, yeah, of course I did that. That's what I've been doing my whole life in a pattern, and it just feels different every time. You can only sort of start doing something with the pattern when you understand the pattern, and then you can change your, your fate. Or you can do the same thing again, but like in a very, you know, self realized way, fully understanding what you're doing. But man, this parenting style, and it would also getting inspired <laughs> by this、uh, fathering strategy. You could just like have a kid and invest zero resources into them <laughs> and still have them turn out to be great and just be you. What a dream. And if it doesn't work, Out, you just blame it on the mother's DNA. You gave your son every every possible advantage in life, and those advantages include your DNA and your DNA.